The six biggest commander storylines. It is caught! Delivered at 6 o'clock sharp. It's the pick six at six. We set out to find a leader, someone who could take this franchise to the next level, build an elite team that consistently competes for championships. All right, we've done this for every single group on the team uh, that excludes the specialist. I'm so sorry to uh, Tress and to Tyler Ott and whoever winds up kicking for this team, but I don't, I don't know that there's six questions worth of stuff there. Um, but we salute you in your specialtiness. Uh, number one uh, is going to be the same question we've asked every single time. In fact, every single question is the same. It make nice and organized. So let's get to it. Who are the dudes that we're talking about here? Number one. Number one uh, is is Jaden Daniels, uh, who you know about, Marcus Mariota, Jeff Driscoll, Sam Hartman. And I'm actually going to take the time, to, I think, to break these guys down a little bit because while Daniels is the one that matters the most this year, in fact, uh, we named him the most important commander in 2024 and a very, very bold decision by the Hoffman Show. The quarterback, who's the number two pick, is the most important guy for the season? No way. The role that these other guys play, I think, is actually kind of interesting. So let's talk about it beyond Daniels. Daniels is the obvious, you know, he's going to be the starter. How he plays will determine how the team goes. That's that's how it works. Marcus Mariota, I think it's it's uh, unfortunate that it's he seems to be really struggling so far in training camp because I do think he's got talent. And there is something that Dan said today that I thought was interesting. Or Dan said, uh, I think it was Friday. Yeah, whatever. I don't know what day it is anymore. Well, Dan Quinn said that where he talks about like this is training camp. We're not installing, so there's certain plays that are better for Jaden, certain plays that are better than Marcus. And there's kind of this acknowledgement that if Mariota were to play during the season, maybe some of the offense would look a little different than some of the stuff that he's struggling with right now. And there's going to be plays where Jaden struggles, and maybe they wouldn't run those for Jaden during the season. But Marcus Mariota, if we're being honest, wasn't brought here to play. Marcus Mariota was brought here because as they kind of went around the room and they talked to all the offensive coaches and the defensive coaches and they were like, who are some of the guys that you really liked coaching that you think can help build the culture here? It's very clear that Brian Johnson, the pass game coordinator, went, yeah, Marcus was incredible for Jalen the last or last year in Philadelphia. We should bring him here for whether it was going to be Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, whoever they drafted with that number two pick. Ultimately, very quickly, Adam Peters was like, yep, it's going to be Daniels. Um, but they, they whether it was going to be Daniels uh, when the process ended or not, they liked Mariota in this mentor role. Mariota is a guy who helps connect the locker room. And as I was talking to, I think it was Allegretti yesterday, uh, but it might have been Juice uh, the day before, the two interviews that we did on the first two days of camp, um, Marcus's name came up as one of the guys with Bobby Wagner and Zach Ertz and those veterans that is connecting this locker room. So it's not about, like, yes, if Marcus Mariota has to play as the backup quarterback, then we're going to have some issues potentially with the fact that Marcus Mariota is the backup quarterback. But in the old, uh, you know, Howard Mudd, what, and why don't you give Peyton Manning's backup any reps? Uh, well, because if Peyton gets hurt, we're screwed and we don't practice screwed. Like, you're always going to be a bit screwed no matter which veteran you signed as your backup because you want the rookie to come in, win the job, and play well. So how do you support that rookie? The answer was Marcus Mariota. And Dan Quinn talked about that on Friday and that that very specific exact thing and the role that Marcus is playing. The thing I've you know, gotten to know Marcus, you know, coached against him for a lot. You don't know when you coach against somebody what what the man's like, and so he has got just a like absolute presence about him. You know, teammates they're drawn to him. This quarterback room really has the makings of something very special, very unique, and in different ways. Jaden's spoken about it. Marcus has spoken about it. Tavita has. Cliff has. So their connection together, um, you feel that, you hear that from them, but. Uh, the fun part about coaching, or one of the fun parts, is finding the specific things that people do well. And so when you're in a training camp setting like now, you're installing plays not always specific to a player. And so if you were just to put a line in, these might be the you know 10 or 15 concepts that Marcus does best. This might be the 10 or 15 that Jaden does best. These are the same with Jeff. And so that's how you would do a game plan. 
that's different than a training camp install. And so learning what guys do as you're going through practices, man, that's a good play for him. And that's, that's what the fun of putting the big puzzle is together. But uh, I didn't know the leader, you know, you had heard so many things um, from him uh, or something about him that he was good. Um, I spent a lot of my off season in Hawaii and I see people, you know, tell Marcus, I said, hello. I said, oh, I didn't know you know him. He said, I don't. But that's how they feel about him back home as well. And so I thought, what a great um, line for that. Hey, tell Marcus hello. No, I didn't know you know him. I went to a camp one time. He was there. And so the connection that he has um, away from the game with his teammates is really strong, too. And that's what you're looking for out of Marcus Mariota. You're looking for a guy who is going to connect the team top to bottom a guy who can be a resource even if he is not the world's greatest executor and look i would love if marcus Mariota got the chance to play if he proved all of us who were crushing him wrong or really because it's not even that we're crushing him right it's it's we're we're looking at what we see on the field and what we see on the field isn't good like he dirted a couple balls today uh in training camp and you're just it's the reality that he's he hasn't been crushing it he did not have a productive spring as a player but his value to this team, if this team is at its best, is not going to be as a active, on the field, in between the white lines football player. And he is critically important to the room, critically important to Jaden's success. And I think this is something that is true with young quarterbacks all across the league. Who are your vets? And young players across the league, across sports, who are your vets? Who are the guys that set you up with the know-how? And Marcus Mariota seems to be doing that. Which brings us to the third guy in the room, and that's Jeff Driscoll, who I actually don't know isn't better than Marcus Mariota as a football player. Marcus is a former number two overall pick who's played a lot of snaps in this league, and thus he has a level of experience and know-how and, and been there, done that, and he's been through some stuff off the field being a second pick that it didn't pan out for that a guy like Driscoll, later round pick, he actually was converted to tight end, I think at one point, back at quarterback, um, never really was a highly touted guy coming out of Florida, um, but has started a game in, I think, every season that he's been in the league. Like, he he just doesn't have that experience that, that Mariota has as an NFL player, but he might be better as an actual quarterback. Or if not, they're close. And I would say so far through the spring and the first couple of training camp practices, Driscoll and Mariota are closer than Mariota and Daniels. So that backup quarterback spot, I don't think because of all the intangible stuff that I just spent maybe even too much time talking about with Marcus about, I don't know that it's actually in play, but if we're doing it based purely on performance, I think it is. And it's the kind of thing where, if, God forbid, something happens to Daniels and Mariota starts not playing well. Like, would they go to Driscoll? Maybe. Um, I, I think that's interesting. And last but not least, I'll just mention Sam Hartman, who is, of course, interesting. Priority UDFA. Gave him a little bit of extra money. They targeted him. And I think, like, in some ways, he's the future Mariota. Not that he's going to ever have the experience to be Jaden's partner, uh, you know, and, and be like, hey, buddy. I, I, when I was a starter five years ago, because Jaden and, and Dan or Jaden and Sam are the same age, but they have a great relationship. They work out together. Sam takes everything really seriously. Um, you know, if you watch him in practice, he's behind, like, he doesn't get reps. He actually got some today for the first time in team drills. Um, but the first two practices, he didn't even get reps. And because of that, he's taking exactly what he's supposed to do, taking his own reps. He's behind the play like mentally in it uh, with a, a towel in his hand and, th you know, throwing the towel, uh, not throwing in the towel, throwing the towel, if you will, uh, which is uh, something that quarterbacks do to kind of simulate the weight of the football in their hand and, and processing the play, taking those mental reps. And he looks like a batter uh, who's, who's hitting from the batter's box or from the, uh, the on-deck circle. And that's kind of what he's doing, timing up, trying to do the best he can to be in it, knowing he's not going to actually be in it. But I think what, what you have in Hartman is a really smart guy who's a great teammate. And there are, you know, guys across the league who maybe turn into, after 12 years, ESPN NFL analysts like Dan Orlovsky. Dan Orlovsky wasn't a great player in the NFL. He's one of the best players in the history of UConn football. But, like, okay, that's UConn football. Um, and Hartman was a pretty solid. I mean, Notre Dame's got a better history than UConn. But, um, you know, pretty solid uh, uh he was a solid college quarterback, but 
Is he going to be able to do it in the NFL? No. Could he be valuable and have a decade plus career in the league because he's really smart and he's he's the kind of guy you want in a meeting room, someone who might see something on tape or be able to explain something in a different way that still has the touch of a player, but maybe the the knowledge level of a coach. Yes. And so that I think is the hope for Sam Hartman as he develops into a solid backup. He's not killing it when he's out there in, in the drills. Like he he misses throws at a higher rate than the other three guys. Like it's pretty clear he's the fourth guy, but that doesn't mean he can't make the practice squad and then and then wind up carving out some kind of career for himself. Uh, even if it looks like a guy we're going to talk about more in number two. So let's get to it. Who are the coaches at play for this quarterback group? Number two. Starts with Cliff, former quarterback himself, known for being a a bit of a quarterback whisperer, a guy who has had great success with a lot of different styles of quarterback. And of course, in the NFL, he and Kyler really worked well together. And I think people need to take the, one, the reputation that Cliff had, two, the way it ended in Arizona, and separate it from the reality of what it was, which was, Three pretty darn good offensive years and then a disastrous injury year that ultimately leads to, I think it was a 4-12 and record and Cliff getting fired. But like, the Cardinals were pretty good record-wise even. They made the playoffs. Like, they had struggles late in the year and got blown out in playoff games. And like, I'm not telling you that Cliff was actually an awesome head coach who got screwed in Arizona. Um, Although I will say it was interesting. When we talked to Zach Ertz on Take Command, uh, you know, before camp started, he was not happy with how things ended for Cliff in Arizona. So I think a lot of the players really liked Cliff, which tells you something. Certainly Zach Ertz, who's been around a time or two, uh, you know, in this league, he's he he's a big fan of Cliff. So that is that is what it is. But the point is, like, Cliff did succeed offensively. And I think he would also look back and be like, I can do a lot better. That some of the areas where we ultimately did fail in Arizona, I know and have identified some of those things, and we're going to find out. But the other big, you know, coaching influences here, I think, are what's most interesting about this staff when it comes to the offense, when it comes to the quarterback. There are so many different thought processes in the room. And we're not going to talk a ton about Anthony Lynn here, but like him coming in as an as a different stylistic guy with the run game stuff and how that matches with the pass game. Like that's interesting. Obviously, Brian Johnson is a huge influence here. Former quarterback himself, been Jalen Hurts' guy in Philly, was a bit of a scapegoat by what everyone says last year. Like really Sirianni tried to put his, his prints on things after Shane Steichen left and it did not go well and Brian Johnson wound up getting fired for it. But a lot of people around the league still really believe in Brian Johnson, think that he was a huge part of the success of Jalen two years ago in the MVP caliber season. Um, And what he brings in terms of quarterback run knowledge, what he brings in terms of vertical passing game, some of the stuff that Philly's been really good with Hurts in, does mesh really well with Cliff and how that comes together is is fascinating. Uh, obviously, Tavita Pritchard, brought in by Eric Bieniemy last year and held on to. He comes from a West Coast offense background. What does he bring to the room? What does he bring to the coaching style? What does he bring in terms of the relationships? How does he meld with all these guys? They seem to be getting along great. It seems to, that they have a great room. And then the last guy is, is kind of the Sam Hartman whisperer. His job is in part to develop Sam Hartman but he brings kind of this bridge because he was an active player last year. His assistant quarterbacks coach, David Blau, who was under Cliff in Arizona, was with uh, Jared Goff last year in in Detroit. And is just known as this wizard-like, super-brained guy who is now learning how to coach. And, and Dan Quinn was actually asked about Blau's progress and his role within the staff. Yeah, and all of these are new for him as well as he's going through it. And so he's also really involved, you know, with Sam and that development plan too. So knowing this is what we're going to do this month and we laid out everything that looks like for Sam to go. But um, much like you do with a player, um, we're not just developing players. We're developing coaches too. And we're not going to miss one step with a guy like Dave or William Gay or Sharif or Ryan Kerrigan that are ready to take these moves together because – the good part about something like that, one of the good parts is they've seen the game through the lens of the helmet. And so for a guy at quarterback who's done that and seen that, he also knows what development looks like. He knows what starting looks like, what being a backup looks like, the, the good and the hard with that. And so he's got this unique perspective that I want him to be able to share with those guys because it's not one size fits all. So he's off to a great start with us. I love that in general, away from the quarterback stuff, uh, is is Dan realizes like you have to develop coaches. And I will I will forever remember asking Ron last year in the spring, basically, hey man, you delegate a lot. Uh, 
what is it that you're doing now? And that was the, that's the short version of the question. I asked it very nicely. And Ron was like, well, that's actually a great question. And one of the things that he tried to answer with was, well, I'm, I'm coaching coaches. I'm, I'm trying to try to develop coaches more this year. And, uh, didn't go great. Um, I think that's something that a head coach maybe should have been worried about earlier in his tenure. And, uh, also probably if he was more effective. Anyway, we don't need to beat up on Rivera. Point is, I think Quinn understands that development. And I actually think that is one of the big, big lessons that he took out of what happened to him in Atlanta was, as everybody knows, they lost the Super Bowl 28 to three. Kyle Shanahan left and then things didn't go great. So let's say they hopefully have a lot of success here. Hopefully they don't lose a Super Bowl after being up 28 to three. But whatever level of success they have here, Cliff gets poached and Cliff's ready to go try being a head coach again. Do they have the next guy ready? Do they have systems in, in place to ensure continuity if things are going well, especially with a young quarterback that would be playing extremely well if all of a sudden his offensive coordinator is getting poached. So I think that that's a great like overarching thing for DQ to know. And that if they're good defensively, like there will be guys that get poached off the staff to go be coordinator somewhere else and to have the next guys in line and coach the coaches, I think is great. And of course, that communication within a coaching staff makes you better coaches to the players, which brings us back to them hopefully being successful with Jaden Daniels. Speaking of Jaden Daniels, number three. Who's the best player in the room? Uh, that answer is number five. Uh, Jaden Daniels is is already the best guy in the room. Jaden Daniels will only get better. Um, I don't really know what more there is to say. Uh, he's got good touch, good accuracy, good feet, good feel. The question is, how consistently can he use those things effectively at the NFL level? TBD, starting in the preseason, and then uh, off to the regular season we go. Number four. Number four. Hey, that's what I said. Uh, number four is who's the wild card in the room. Um, I will say it's Mariota because, like, obviously he's the backup, and I, I don't know how much any of these other guys are going to matter to the 2024 season. Hopefully not. Um, I know Driscoll's got the weird stat that he started a game every year. Hopefully that's not ominous. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if Mariota has to play, then how he plays is a huge determining factor. And if, you know, things go super south – and he's playing a lot, uh, that's not great. If things, if he, all of a sudden he comes in and plays really well and keeps the season afloat uh, for Daniels to ultimately come back, like, great. I, I, it's Daniels' job. Um, Mariota's there to fill in if he has to. And and in that way, the, the unique nature of quarterback uh, makes this question a lot harder to answer than some of the other groups where there's been guys who have the, the wild swing potential because there's multiple players at each position. Really, the wild card is Daniels, if we're being honest, because he's a rookie. And does he play like a rookie or does he play like... Uh, a vet, and uh, actually they're good this year. So really the answer is Jaden Daniels again. All right, number five. Number five. Number five is a question that I don't know. Our last wild card question, and we're going super wild card on this one because Anthony Haney is not here. Matty Essig, you get to ask the quarterback question. What is your, uh, Craig doesn't know it yet, but he's got to answer it, question about the quarterback position. So one of the important things that we've seen in this training camp is that despite the fact you're, you correct Marcus Mariota has not been great. He's been taking a majority of the first team snaps. And we've also heard from Adam Peters, from Dan Quinn, that they will start him when he's ready, not before when he's ready. My question for you, given that the only chance he's not starting is there is a catastrophic accident that happens. When do you think Jaden Daniels is starting? Uh, by the joint practices. I, I really don't think it'll take that long. Um, Kaim has a funny way of saying this, um, which is it is Jaden versus Daniels. It is not Jaden versus Marcus. It's not Dade, uh, you know Daniels versus Mariota. It is Jaden versus Daniels. And in that way, like it's a, it's just another way of saying what Peters and Quinn said that you referenced, which is when he's ready, they'll name him. The thing is, he's already the best quarterback on the roster. And while yes, Marcus is getting some of the number one snaps, um, and there he seems to be getting the first rounds of number one snaps. Snaps, they are mixing and matching personnel so much that it's not true number one snaps, right? He's getting, Daniels is getting reps with Dotson and with McLaurin and some reps, some periods, you know, it's behind the number one O-line. And then occasionally maybe he's with the two line, but the one receivers, there was a two minute drill on Thursday, uh, the second day of practice where it's mostly twos, but Zach Ertz was out there in the two minute drill, catching passes, doing, doing work with, with JD five. So I, I think they're mixing and matching enough that 
they're not really putting themselves behind. And in fact, they're doing the kind of cross training that's good for developing multiple relationships in case different guys have to play, whether Marcus has to play as a backup or whether, you know, Terry misses a game and, you know, wide receiver four has to all of a sudden be the starter. You want some sense of rhythm, some sense of timing, some sense of all that with all these different guys. But realistically, like, there's going to get to a point two weeks or so into camp after the first preseason game, maybe by the second preseason game, the joint practices and all that, where you want to stop doing the, oh, we're still evaluating and you want to just hardcore get ready for the season. And also some of that is pushed by the deadlines of how much you play guys in preseason games, because, well, if Daniels is the starter, then maybe he plays a half in the second preseason game and doesn't play the third. If he's not the starter yet, well, is he playing in the third preseason game? How do you get enough snaps for Driscoll and, and Hartman if you have a development plan for them? Like, there's a lot of multi-factors that go into that. And so I think that uh, I think that all that stuff, that stuff goes into it. But I, I think by the time we get to the joint practices, it'll be pretty clear that Mar that uh, Jaden Daniels is the, the, if not the name starter, like, they're going to be acting like he's the starter. A good question. Uh, last Thank but not least. Number six. Who makes the team? I came into this spring thinking they'd keep three because that's what most teams do now. And you have the third whatever on game day. I don't know that they're going to do that because I don't think they can. Like, I do think a guy like Driscoll might be a little hard to get to practice squad, even as a veteran. Like, you know, is there another team that signs him as a backup? Uh, is he always going to be at risk of being poached? Yes. Hartman, very easy to get to, to practice squad. No one is, is signing Sam Hartman to their active roster. Um, I would not, I would think anyway. I mean, I guess someone could be like, we love that dude as a developmental project. We'll, we'll put him on our 53 as a, uh, as a, you know, inactive quarterback every week, but that would be a stupid use of a roster spot. Um, so because there's so many guys at other positions though, I think that they can only like, stand to carry two. You need that roster spot. So I'm going to say Daniels and Mariota. They make the team. Driscoll hopefully can get to practice squad and is around. Hartman practice squad and is around. And that's the room. Um, the, the veteran practice squad stuff is really helpful now. I don't want to give up Driscoll if I can. Like I like having him around as another option if all of a sudden something happens and, and you need a backup quarterback to play. Again, especially with how they've played. But I, I think to go back to where I started and where I spent a lot of time in this segment is to not just repeat the same stuff about Jaden Daniels and what he does well and and you know all the same stuff we're going to be talking about at nauseum. The the value of Mariota, the dude in the room, the experience, all that kind of stuff as a mentor to Jaden is why he's going to probably stay above Driscoll. And so I think those two make the roster. Team 980 and the Odyssey app.